With the return of E3 this year, Nintendo has finally revealed a new trailer for the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, two years after its initial announcement. Showing gameplay, as well as in-game cinematics, Nintendo revealed the game is set to release on 2022. However, the title of the game continues to be unknown, as according to Bill Trinan, the director of product marketing at Nintendo of America, the title may contain spoilers of what may happen in the story. The trailer shows a lot of new interesting details regarding the sequel, from new enemies to mysterious locations. There's a lot to unpack here, so without further ado, let's dive in and take a deep look at this newly released trailer. The trailer begins with tendrils of malice slowly flowing upwards, as several images flash before our eyes. The first shot is of Link, whose arm is quickly being enveloped by tendrils of malice. We can see that he's holding a Master Sword, however this is the only shot in the trailer where we see him wielding it at all. We know from the past trailer that Link had the Master Sword when he entered the underground caverns with Zelda. However, in all the shots from that trailer, Link had the sword on his back, so it's not clear when exactly this scene takes place, but it's safe to assume that it happens after Ganondorf's awakening. As this happens, we hear a quick shriek as the malice climbs up his arm. This sound belongs to the full blight of Ganon, as well as Calamity Ganon itself. While his arm is being consumed by malice, Link grabs it with his other arm, as he changes his expression to one of agony and pain. This same pose is the one we see in the first trailer, when Link absorbs the green hand. However, as mentioned before, Link had the Master Sword on his back in the first trailer, while in this one he is holding it in his right hand. As Link's hand in this shot does not have the green hand's bracelet we let it see on the trailer, it likely takes place before he absorbs the hand, and it is very possible that the green hand detaches itself from Ganondorf to save Link from the corrupted powers of Malice. As the Malice tendrils grow increasingly more active, we get another shot that flashes on screen. This time, we get a good look at the mummified Ganondorf, fully awakened rather than being held down by the mysterious spirit hand. We can also see small holes on his chest, which I initially thought belonged to the green hand, until I saw that they can also be seen on the first trailer just below the hand. On the shot of Ganondorf in Breath of the Wild 2, we can actually see the five holes of the hand's fingers as well, but the holes below them have a different origin. These holes are symmetrical, Positioned just below the ribcage, consisting of a big hole in the center, with a small hole on the top, and two at the bottom. The position of these wounds are on the exact same place as the glowing scar Ganondorf from Twilight Princess had, caused by the Sword of the Sages and by the Master Sword after Link stabbed them following their duel, perhaps being the remnants of that exact wound. It is possible that after the corpse shriveled and decayed, the stab wound shrank as well and partially healed itself, leaving behind these holes. These are not the only holes on Ganondorf's body, however, as there are several more that are found on the palms of his hands and on his wrists, and I believe this to be stigmata, wounds caused by nails after a crucifixion. It seems to me that Ganondorf was hung from his hands in a similar way to how Christ was crucified, with nails going through his hands and wrists. Many depictions of Christ on the cross show him with nails going through his wrists, and in others on his hands, so this may be the same. We are unable to see Gandos' feet, but if these have holes as well, just like how Jesus does as he had nails driven through his feet too, then Ganondorf was definitely crucified, and perhaps, similar to Twilight Princess, he may have survived this, maybe even breaking free, which resulted in him being sealed underground by the green hand as a last resort. As the malice tendrils engulf the screen, 
we get a final shot of Princess Zelda falling down to the dark depths below. This shot may be directly after this shot from the first trailer, where the ground begins to shake around them as it starts to collapse. In the first trailer, we also see that the spirit hand grabbed Ling as he was falling down, perhaps the ground below him collapsing as well shortly after Zelda's fall. The green hand grabs his left arm, while his right hand is out of view, so we can't really see if Link's hand has already been touched by the malice. However, in the shot where the ground begins to collapse, Link's hands are both intact, so the scene where Link's hand touches the malice may happen after Link and Zelda are separated. Following this, a bright flash of white light illuminates the entire screen, as we cut to a beautiful shot of Link falling down from high atop the clouds, in a pose very reminiscent to the Hero of the Sky from Skyward Sword, as he skydives from the many platforms of Skyloft. There are many things to discuss from this shot alone. Rather than being underground, Link is falling from the sky down to floating islands below him. These islands have many trees with golden leaves reminiscent to the colorful vegetation from Nakala. The stone pathways of these floating islands, with a dark grey road and light grey border, look remarkably similar to the pathways found in the exterior of the Palace of Twilight from Twilight Princess, which curiously enough also consists of floating islands. I believe that the interlopers, the magic wielding ancestors of the Twilight who were banished to the Twilight Realm, and the Sonai, the mysterious tribe of magic wielding barbarians who disappeared without a trace in the distant past of Breath of the Wild, are one and the same, being the ones who created these pathways and the many ruins of the floating islands. These pathways are not the only potential tie to the Twilight in this shot alone. Link's arm, who has fused together with the spirit hand that held Ganondorf down in the underground caverns from the previous trailer, now sporting the golden arm bracelet that the hand possessed, turned Link's skin dark grey, with veiny-like rectangular patterns extending from his arm to his shoulder. This is a very interesting detail, as we've seen this sort of pattern before, once again in Twilight Princess, on the skin of Puppet Zelda after she was possessed by Ganondorf using the powers of the Twilight, once again tying the Sonai to the interlopers. Link is also no longer wearing the champion's tunic from Breath of the Wild, but a new, never before seen green garb that hangs over his left shoulder. What's interesting about this new set of clothes is how similar they seem to the one seemingly worn by the hero of 10,000 years ago from Impa's tapestry. Perhaps these clothes, as well as a mysterious spirit hand, belonging to the ancient hero of old. On the recent era threads, Several people found where exactly these floating islands of this particular shot are located. We can see several trees and pathways that when compared to Breath of the Wild, actually belong to Maybe Prairie of Hyrule Field, meaning these islands are floating quite close to Hyrule Castle. They also noticed that there were new lakes on the shot, lakes which were not present in Breath of the Wild, and that has led me to believe that those lakes may have formed as a result of the ground being raised skyward, but we'll discuss the origin of these mysterious islands later on in the video. The next shot shows Link paragliding through the clouds towards a series of floating islands. One of these islands has a structure that is far larger than the rest, which is also briefly seen on the previous shot as well, perhaps being a dungeon that floats in the sky. An interesting detail of this shot is that the paraglider that Link is using has a different design from the one seen in Breath of the Wild, having both the Rito crest as well as a stylus Highland crest around it. It is very possible that we may get various types of paragliders with different properties, such as gliding faster or falling quicker, or that we may be able to upgrade the paraglider from Breath of the Wild to provide it with various buffs. We also get a look at a brand new shield with a unique eye-like symbol. The symbol looks very reminiscent to the Sheikah eye, having three lashes on top 
and two short lines on each side. We'll discuss this eye symbol and its potential ties to the Sheikah a bit further into the video. We can also see that Link is wearing new shoes compared to the previous shot, closely resembling those of the Snow Quill trousers, likely being clothes designed to protect the wearer from the cold temperatures of high altitudes, as the further up you go, the colder it gets, which is why tall mountains tend to have snowy peaks. In the next shot, we see Link running atop one of the many floating islands of the sky, as we see birds flying off to an island that's on a higher elevation. We can see a gate in the distance that is very reminiscent to the Japanese story, symbolic gateways marking the entrance to the sacred grounds of a Shinto shrine, special temples in Japan said to be the home of gods, or kami, which may indicate these floating islands may be some sacred place to the ones who built these structures. In fact, the golden trees we see all around the islands appear to be ginkgo trees, a type of very popular tree in Japan that have golden leaves and which are usually found in Shinto shrines. It is in the next shot that things begin to get interesting. We are introduced to a giant golem made of green and white stone, with accents of orange stone in what seems to be its eye, body and claws. On its sides, it has two eye-like decorations that hang upside down. When rotated, we can see it not only resembles the eye on the shield, but also the Shika eye, although it's clear that the people who created this machine are separate from the ones who created the guardians, the shrines and the divine beasts from Breath of the Wild. This machine, if it even is a machine, seems far more ancient. The eye on the shield and the ones on the stone golem look quite similar to two eye-like symbols we've seen in the past, which also have been closely compared to the Shika eye. First, we have the eye on the throne of the twilight. Like the eye on the shield, it has three eyelashes on the top and on the bottom. This same eye is also found on the back of the few shadow. This eye pattern on both the throne and the few shadow is also very interesting, as it is very similar to the Shika eye found on Skyward Sword's Impa's forehead. Both eyes, which are the same shape, rather than having three triangles on top of the eye, have three lines, as well as filled in pupils instead of the hollow circles of the modern Shika eye. When compared to the Shika eye symbol from the seal placed on the seal temple's door by old Impa thousands of years later, there seems to be a progression between the symbols. The trifle symbols being added after, the strills becoming shorter, and the teardrop becoming longer, as if it were slowly falling over time. There's also the fact that the Twilight have red eyes, which is a trait that's predominant in the Shika. Then, we have this symbol of the Time Shift Stones from Skyward Sword, which is very similar to both the Shika eye, as well as the eye on the shield, as it has three lash-like lines at the bottom of the eye, as well as lines at the sides of the eye. It also has a curved line over the eye, like the one in the shield. If this is intended to be a Shika eye, it would mean that the ancient technology of the Laniru region from Skyward Sword was built by the Shika. This would be a direct parallel to Breath of the Wild, a game sharing the same director as Skyward Sword. As in Breath of the Wild, the Shika were a highly advanced civilization who constructed technological wonders. Yet I don't think this golem was built by the Shika we know. As we saw in the first trailer, the underground caverns were decorated with the many structures of the enigmatic Sona tribe, a mysterious tribe of magic-wielding barbarians who resided in the Faran region in the long distant past, said to have been banished long ago, the reasons as to why remaining a mystery to this day. This mysterious golem seems to be of Sonai origin, not only due to the way it is built, which is reminiscent of all the Sonai-built structures, 
but also the green energy running through it. The fact that it is run on green energy is especially significant, as it is the same energy that is emitted by Link's new green hand. Many theorists, including myself, have made the connection that this energy is tied to luminous stones, which were scattered across the vast underground system, and used by the Sonai on many of the structures, as seen in Tiflo ruins and the stone monuments of Palmyra ruins. These stones are said to contain the spirits of the dead, which gives them their eerie green glow, a glow that shares its color with the flames surrounding the spirits of the deceased champions and the king of Hyrule, making this green energy spirit energy. What's especially interesting about this green energy is that it doesn't make its first appearance in the sequel to Breath of the Wild either, as it seems to have appeared in various other games of the series, more specifically Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. In the Wind Waker, in the Tower of the Gods, a structure made to test the hero, there exists various structures that awaken and follow the hero. When the command melody is played, a song designed to take over sentient beings, Link can take over several statues which begin to glow green instead of blue. Something very curious as well is that Godan, the arbiter and boss of the Tower of the Gods, is made of stone of the same shade of green as the mysterious golem from the trailer. And while the golem is controlled by green energy, Godan glows blue, as well as the room that he's in, which bears a strong resemblance to the Sheikah shrines from Breath of the Wild, both sharing constellation-like patterns on the walls. In Twilight Princess, the green energy is seen directly within the Temple of Time, produced by the Dominion Rod, an ancient artifact created by the sky people known as the Uka. When used on a statue, it starts to glow green and begins to mimic Link's every move. However, there are also statues in Twilight Princess which glow blue, those being the guardians that protect the Master Sword, which, like in the Wind Waker, act and move by themselves, even possessing the ability to talk, just like Godan. I believe that the green energy that controls these statues is spirit energy, and that the statues glow green when they're under the control of a spirit, while those that glow blue are machines that act independently and possess artificial intelligence, and those that glow red, such as the corrupted guardians and sans hands from Twilight Princess, are corrupted by malice. The Uka, the creators of the Dominion Rod, have ties to the Twilight, as symbols from the Twilight, such as their crest, appears in the city in the sky. The Uka, as they had a hand in the construction of the Temple of Time, are also likely responsible for the creation of the Beamos and Armors from said temple, enemies that also appear within the Tower of the Gods, which also has ties to the Twilight, as textures from the Tower of the Gods are also found within the Palace of Twilight. The city in the sky also has several enemies found within the forest temple from Faron Woods in Twilight Princess, such as the Baba Serpents, Big Babas, Deku Likes, Tower Worms, and Waltulas. The Helmosaurus, the big, bulky relatives of the Helmosaurs, which are known as Hiploops, are also known as Deku Loops the word Deku being a term used to describe creatures and certain objects directly tied with the forest. This means that the city in the sky was built and risen from Faron Woods. It is especially curious that they did this from this specific location, as the Sonai originate from Faron Woods as well. The forest temple also has ties to Twilight architecture too, or more specifically, architecture of the interlopers the ancestors of the Twilight, a tribe of dark magic wielders who were banished from the kingdom after they attempted to take dominion over Hyrule. And as we know, the Sonai, said to practice dark magic, also banished mysteriously from Hyrule. It is also quite curious how both the Sonai and the Twilight used twin serpents in their architecture and clothing, 
almost as if they are one and the same. But the connections don't just end there. The colors of the golem, those being green, beige and orange, are very reminiscent of the ancient tech of Laneru, which shares the same exact color schemes in all of their structures and automatons. It is very curious then, that symbols found in the city in the sky, as well as those resembling the sun as rose, are found in various structures of Laneru. Remember how I pointed out how the time shift stones seem to have a Shika eye? I strongly believe that the Shika were the ones who created the technology of Laneru, and that sometime after Skyward Sword, the tribe fractured into two. Those who remain loyal to Goddess Hylia, and another faction who we refer to as the Sonai, who would become the so-called interlopers that would turn against the kingdom. This will be a direct parallel with Breath of the Wild, where the Shika became a technologically advanced race, who later fractured into two tribes, the Shika who remained loyal to Goddess Hylia, and the Jiga, who turned against the kingdom. This would mean that we have three types of Shika across Hyrule's history, each representing a piece of the Triforce. The blue, ninja-like Shika, who represent the Crest of Wisdom, the red wearing Jiga, who will represent the Crest of Power, and the Sonai, who will represent the Crest of Courage. It is also interesting to note how the eyes on the golem are upside down, very similar to how the Jiga turned their eye symbols upside down after they fractured from the Shika, perhaps the same being the case with the Sonai if they indeed fractured from the Shika in the distant past. Further solidifying this idea is the three animal statues built by the Sonai, which each represent a respective virtue of the Triforce, owls representing wisdom, dragons representing courage, and boars representing power. The Sonai have strong ties to dragons, seen in many of the structures and artifacts, and the Jiga, once loyal to the kingdom, sided with Ganon, who takes the form of a raging boar-like demon. The golem has several details that ties it to dragons as well. On its abdomen, it has a glowing circle surrounded by four fangs reminiscent of the Sonite dragon statues seen all over Faron Woods, and its claws bear a striking resemblance to those of the dragons from Breath of the Wild, both having four fingers and long, colorful fingernails, solidifying this automaton as a Sonite construction, as the Sonai are deeply connected to serpentine dragons. Another aspect of the golem I want to point out is its shoulders, which resemble closed lotus flowers, and the significance of this is once again astronomical, as lotus flowers were a central theme in one of the dungeons of Skyward Sword, this being the ancient cistern, located in Lake Floria, a lake found in the Faron region, which also appears in Breath of the Wild, having strong ties to the Sonai. In Buddhism, the lotus flower is a symbol of fortune. As it grows in muddy water, its environment gives the flower the first of its meanings, rising and blooming above the murk to achieve enlightenment. The second meaning, related to the first, is the purification of the spirit, and the third refers to faithfulness, as in order to rise from the muddy water, one must be faithful to Buddha. The color of the lotus flower also bears a meaning in Buddhism. A white lotus flower, as seen in the golem, refers to purity in the mind and spirit. A red lotus flower refers to compassion and love. Blue lotus flowers refer to common sense. Pink lotus flowers represent the history of Buddha. Purple lotus flowers speak of spirituality and mysticism and gold lotus flowers represent the achievement of all enlightenment. And the stage in which the lotus flower is in also represents a different stage of enlightenment. A closed lotus flower represents the time before enlightenment, while a full bloom lotus flower represents full enlightenment. Aside from appearing on its shoulders, the closed lotus flowers also show up on a small pedestal 
at both sides of a set of stairs leading to what looks to be a sort of shrine. Perhaps these small structures being the equivalent of the Shika shrines of this game. These small structures are abundant on the islands, appearing on the previously discussed shots, and later on in the trailer too, so they seem to be quite important. The fact that this golem has what seems to be white closed lotus flowers, and what appears to look like Japanese story-like gates in the Sky Islands, seems to indicate that this golem, as well as this place, are sacred. I also feel that Link being seen skydiving in Breath of the Wild 2, just like in Skyward Sword, which curiously enough is getting a HD remaster before the release of Breath of the Wild 2, and all of these connections and symbology between these two games seems to me to be deliberate by the developers. Nintendo Black Crisis made an extensive video where he went over the connections between the various mysterious tribes of Hyrule, with a lot of research provided by my friend Lerulian Historian. That video is definitely a must watch, and I may do a video of my own interpretations of these connections in the future. There's way more connections between all of these tribes that I haven't gone over here, but I thought I would go over the idea, as the ties are very interesting especially even more so now that this golem has been revealed. A link to Nintendo Black Crisis' video will be in the description. Now, there's several possibilities of what this golem may be. The first possibility is that it may be a new enemy, perhaps replacing the guardians of the previous game, a sonic guardian if you will, that resides on the floating islands and the green energy that flows through it belonging to a hostile spirit that's controlling it or the spirit of a being that is protecting these lands. An enemy from previous games that comes to mind when looking at this golem are the Igo statues, big, one-eyed stone golems that have appeared in several games of the series. If this is an Igo, I think it's safe to assume that other golem-like enemies may also appear, such as Armos and Bimos, all of Sonai origin. The second possibility is that this may be a friendly NPC, a machine or statue possessed with a sonic spirit that will aid you in your quest in some form or another, perhaps upgrading your equipment or granting new weapons of some kind like Cherry, Robbie's Ancient Oven, or providing hints and tips like the gossip stones from past games. The yellow symbol on its abdomen looks to me to be a broomstick, so perhaps it is a janitor robot of some kind that maintains these mysterious floating islands. The third possibility is that this statue is being controlled by Link directly using the spirit hand, akin to how you are able to control statues in Twilight Princess with the Dominion Rod by use of green energy. Only this time, your green hand would be the Dominion Rod. Moving on from the Golem, we see Link flying down with the same paraglider from the previous shots near an encampment of Bokoblins who have made their home atop of Stone Talus, covering his ore deposit weak spot with wooden boards to make their mobile home harder to kill. The Bokoblins, in contrast to their counterparts in Breath of the Wild, have a much longer horn in the sequel, similar to those of Moblins from the past game, perhaps due to the awakening of Ganondorf as his malice seems to be much stronger this time around. There's also a few interesting details from this shot in the background I would like to point out. First, we see stone ruins scattered on the fields that seem to belong to the ruins of the Sky Islands, likely having fallen from them down to the surface. Then we have Death Mountain, which, unlike its past iteration in Breath of the Wild, has become dormant with no smoke coming out of his crater and no lava flowing out. And perhaps, with the lava cleared, this may be the location for a new dungeon. And finally, there is a very interesting detail that one of my followers on Twitter pointed out. On the top corner of the shot, we can see the Great Hyrule Forest. However, we can't see the Great Deku Tree. I initially dismissed this as the angle of the camera playing tricks on us, but if we actually look at Breath of the Wild in the exact same angle, 
we can actually see the treetop of the Great Deku Tree out in the distance, but we can't see it in the trailer of Breath of the Wild 2. As we see both in the previous trailer and later in this trailer, Hyrule Castle was raised skyward. Perhaps the Deku Tree, for whatever reason, was raised to the sky atop a small patch of land similar to Hyrule Castle. Following the shot of the stone talus, we see Link presumably lying unconscious atop a round stone platform, as his newly acquired hand glows with the ethereal green energy while magic swirls form around it. This shot seems to follow the aftermath of what happens in the first trailer, after Link absorbed the green hand and presumably after he separated from Princess Zelda. What I think is going on here is the hand is healing Link's arm from the damage inflicted by the malice in this shot. It is very similar to Princess Mononoke, where the protagonist, Ashitaka, has his hand cursed by the blight of a demon boar, a substance remarkably similar to that of malice, both born from hatred and both given to the hero by a demon boar. Symbols can be seen on the stone that Link is laying on, and while they are indecipherable for now, as they are new to the series and never before seen in any of the other games as far as I've been able to see, this seems to be a new language, similar to how the Sheikah had their own script in Breath of the Wild, and my bet is that this is Sona's script. It is possible that the symbols that we saw in the green energy of the first trailer, which many believe to be Gerudo script, may actually be this supposed Sona script. And if true, then we may get a Sonai alphabet to decipher these hidden messages like we did with Shika text in Breath of the Wild. What follows this shot is very interesting. We see Link perform a spell akin to that of the Stasis Rune from Breath of the Wild, only rather than using a Shika slate, he now uses his green hand to perform the action. But while it looks like Stasis, it is actually a very different ability. Rather than stopping the object in place and storing kinetic energy to send it flying in the other direction, it seems it merely reverses the direction in which the object is moving with the same exact momentum, showing a yellow trail to depict the object's new trajectory. In this shot, we also get to see not only blue bokoblins, the stronger variant of the red bokoblins, which also spot the elongated horn, but also moblins which appear to be wearing a sort of helmet, if it even is a helmet, as maybe that is a new horn, as if it is a helmet, it seems too short to be covering the Moblin's long horn, unless, for some reason, the Moblins decided to cut off their own horns. I do wonder if Linus and Hinoxes will share the same treatment and have any changes in their appearance as well, as it seems like every returning enemy from Breath of the Wild is getting cosmetic and probably gameplay changes, the Bokoblins having longer horns, the Moblins supposedly having helmets, and the Stone Talus being used as Bokoblin bases. Talking of enemies, in the next shot we are introduced to a new enemy, a giant worm that hangs from the ceiling of an underground cavern. The cavern has a stone platform similar to the past games where a chest appears after completing a puzzle or defeating a particular enemy, perhaps this creature being a sort of mini-boss within a dungeon. This creature to me seems to be a mold worm, a worm-like creature that comes out of the ground, or in this case the ceiling, and devours travelers whole. It is not a tail, teru, wrongfully translated in English as moldomes, or a moldarm, morudoamu, which are also sometimes called moldomes although the correct name will be Moldarm, just like the Geldarms, Gerudo Amu, from the Adventure of Link, as the tails and Moldarms don't come out of the ground like the Moldworms do. In the same shot, we see that Link is holding a shield that appears to have a flamethrower attached to it, in the shape of a dragon head, akin to those found in many of the Sonai structures. Before it starts to spew out flames, if we look closely inside the mouth of the head, we can see that it's glowing green, with patterns very reminiscent to those seen in Twilight architecture, 
yet another tie between the two tribes. We then see a shot of a small puddle of water which contracts into a droplet, which then ascends upwards. Although it seems to me that this shot has been reversed to make it flow with the next shot of Link going upwards, as well as to throw us off and make us theorize and speculate. I do have to mention that the way the droplet acts when reversed is quite similar to this droplet in Twilight Princess before the light spirits appear, perhaps yet another connection to Twilight Princess. In the next shot, we see Link ascending upwards towards the bottom half of one of the floating islands, surrounded by green energy, before facing into the rock only to emerge at the other side, as if he just emerged from diving underwater. As he does so, his green hand glows brightly unlike in other shots, which seems to suggest that this facing ability is the result of the spirit hand, perhaps an ability we get in a dungeon similar to how we got the Sheikah Slate runes in shrines, or the champion abilities after freeing the divine beasts, and curiously enough, this ability seems very reminiscent to Rivalis Gale in the way that Link ascends. As the camera zooms away, we can see familiar landmarks of Hyrule from the first game, which allows us to pinpoint where exactly the Sky Islands of this particular shot are located, and that's above the Thundra Plateau, as we can see the giant mushrooms only found in this region. However, in Breath of the Wild, we never see these islands from the surface, and there were no golden trees anywhere in Hyrule, so where did these floating islands even come from? Considering all the sacred symbolism on the islands, such as the lotus flowers, the ginkgo trees, and Tori gates, I considered the idea that this may be the sacred realm, the resting place of the Triforce seen in games such as A Link to the Past and A Link Between Worlds, as in all its depictions, he has been seen as a place with many floating islands. However, like we mentioned before, there are ruins of these floating islands on the surface, so this place must exist within the same realm as Hyrule. If the islands were always in the sky, we should have been able to see them when we boarded by Meadow, but we didn't. And if they rose to the sky, like Haru Castle, then from where did they rise? There were no ginkgo-like trees in Breath of the Wild's overworld, so they couldn't have risen from the surface. And if we assume that they rise from beneath the ground, they will have pushed the ground that is above them, likely destroying the many stone structures we see. The plausible explanation for the origin of these islands may be that these islands were risen in the ancient past, likely by Hylia herself prior to Skyward Sword, possibly even being the islands of Skyloft, and they are slowly falling down after thousands of years after Hylia's magic is wearing off or even by Ganondorf or some unknown force from very high up above the clouds, beyond what the eyes of the surface can see. Another possibility is that there is a cloud barrier between the surface and the sky islands, which prevents the surface from seeing those islands high above, just like in Skyward Sword. In Skyward Sword, to go to the surface, Link needed to open holes in the cloud barrier to descend to the surface. Something similar is seen in Breath of the Wild, when the three dragons that protect the springs appear and leave, as they go through a cloud vortex in the sky, very reminiscent of those seen in the cloud barrier of Skyward Sword, perhaps these portals being how we travel between the sky and the surface, just like Skyward Sword. Other than that, I genuinely can't think of another explanation, unless it's really the Sacred Realm and it's somehow merged with Hyrule's Realm. We then cut to see what really happened with the castle in the initial trailer from up close. As the camera begins to shake uncontrollably from a massive earthquake, a huge cloud of dust appears around the base of the castle, likely following this shot from the trailer, which may be after the hand releases Gandalf's corpse. As the tremors grow increasingly more violent, parts of the castle begin to crumble and fall, as a torrent of blood red malice appears from below the castle lifting it towards the sky. We finally see a shot of Hyrule from a distance, Hyrule Castle now floating above the ground with tendrils of malice surrounding it from below. This shot 
is taken from the other side of Oset Bridge, facing towards Hyrule Castle. There are several differences that are visible when comparing Breath of the Wild to its sequel. First, there is a new monster skull encampment to the left, which wasn't present in Breath of the Wild, having been built by Bob Coblins after the game's events. One of the giant fallen tree trunks seen on the right in Breath of the Wild is also nowhere to be seen in the sequel to Breath of the Wild's shot. As it was part of a Korok puzzle, they may have removed it entirely as it no longer serves a purpose. The same may be true with the other Korok puzzles in Breath of the Wild, which may be removed from Breath of the Wild too, as they've also served their purpose. And finally, and most glaring aside from the literal castle floating, is the absence of the Shika pillars that surrounded Hyrule Castle in Breath of the Wild, as well as the towers and shrines, and all the decayed guardians. It seems to me that the ancient technology from Breath of the Wild has completely vanished from the face of the earth. It is possible that after Link defeated Calamity Ganon in Breath of the Wild and the guardians deactivated, the kingdom dismantled and disposed of all the technology to prevent another catastrophe like the Great Calamity from ever taking place in the future. And that was my analysis of the newest trailer for the sequel to The Lane of Zelda Breath of the Wild. If you have your own theories or suggestions or even have found things in the trailer that I haven't, please comment them in the comments below, I'd love to read them. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified of future uploads. Also. Consider following me on Twitter and Instagram if you haven't already to stay in touch. This has been Sololo, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!